We saw that if a molecule contains a chirality center, that is one atom with four different things attached to it, then there are different ways that those things can be arranged in space that makes the molecule different. And we're gonna be concerned about how to name these molecules. IUPAC uses the R and S system. R from, Latin, from the Latin rectus, meaning right-handed, and S from the Latin sinister, meaning left-handed. So the first thing we need to do, if we're given a molecule, we need to identify all the stereocenters because you don't know, it might have more than one. So let's start with this molecule here. Okay, let's see. So uh, the way I've drawn it now, it's kind of obvious that this is a stereocenter, but sometimes you'll be given a molecule like this and there'll be other, uh, you know, uh, chirality centers. I use stereocenter and chirality center interchangeably. They mean the same thing. So, the, but you have to double check and make sure that there aren't other chirality centers in the molecule. So I've gone ahead and drawn this out in uh, three dimensions, everything out in three dimensions. Because as it looks right now, this is just one group attached to there. But in reality, this also has a tetrahedral uh, shape to it. Because it's a carbon, right? Carbons are sp3 hybridized, meaning that they take on tetrahedral conformations around them. So you can think of this guy coming out of the page, and this carbon sitting out here, and on that carbon there are three hydrogens. So, and likewise with all of these other guys. Now, let's just look and see if there are any other chirality centers in this molecule. Now remember, for, uh, for a chirality center has to have four different things attached to it. So that's four, right now this has four things, but they're not all different. This one has a carbon, a hydrogen, a hydrogen, and a hydrogen. Well, there's three hydrogens, so it can't be a chirality center. Let's move on to this carbon. Okay, it has four things attached to them, but there are two of them are the same, the two hydrogens. So it's not a chirality center. Likewise, we ran into the same thing over here. There's three hydrogens. Those are the same, so that doesn't work. This hydrogen here, it's only a hydrogen, so it can't be a chirality center. It's only attached to one thing. Now this oxygen has two things attached to it, so right there it can't be chiral because it doesn't have four things attached. So we've gone through this whole molecule and we've identified the one and only chirality center, which is this. Actually, we haven't even made sure that that's a chirality center. So let's look. We have this carbon. It's attached to a hydrogen. It's attached to a hydroxyl group, a methyl group, and an ethyl group. So those are each, each of those are four different things, and they're all attached to the same carbon. So yes, that's a chirality center. Now, we, now that we've done that, that's our first, our, our first step for the RNS system. The second step is to assign priority to these different groups. Now, priority is given based on molecular weight. So if you look at, or I'm sorry, atomic weight. So if you look at the atom here, that's directly attached, and I've drawn this out because the first thing we need to identify is the first point of difference. Now, this right here, let's say that this were a long chain of like 100. Well, that would be, that would be very heavy, right? It would weigh a lot, but we're not concerned with the whole thing. The first thing we do is go directly from the chirality center out to the very first atoms that are attached. In this case, it's just these green ones here. And that's why I've color coded this. So let's see. We have, let's use brown, okay. So on this one, we have only a hydrogen directly attached. This one, it's a carbon directly attached. This one, it's a carbon directly attached. And this one is an oxygen directly attached to the chirality center. So which one of those is the lightest and which is the heaviest? Well, if you, you know, look at the periodic table, if you can't figure it out, the hydrogen has atomic number one, so it's the lightest. 
and oxygen is the heaviest because it's atomic number eight, which is heavier than carbon, which is atomic number six. So this one automatically, right there, is the heaviest, and this one is the lightest. So I'm going to label these over here on this molecule. So we have one for the lightest, and since there's four things, we know this is gonna be four for the heaviest. Now we have two other groups to worry about, and as it stands right now, there's no difference. What's directly attached, these guys in green here, they're a tie, they're both carbons. So now that we've run into a tie, we're gonna go out to the next things that are attached. And you're only gonna do that if there's a tie. So we found a tie, two carbons. Now we're gonna go out to the next things that are attached to these guys, which I've drawn in blue. And I guess this should be blue too. Let's do that, actually. This should be blue because it's directly attached to this guy. And these guys should be a different color altogether because it's even further separated from this guy. So I'm gonna redraw that like that. So, we run into our tie, now let's see. This one has a hydrogen, a hydrogen, and a hydrogen attached to it. And this one has a hydrogen, a hydrogen, and a carbon directly attached to it. So of these groups, which one's heavier? Well, obviously it's the one with the carbon. So this one is heavier, so I'm gonna give it a higher number, right? And then the second heaviest is gonna get the lower number. So that's how priority is assigned to these guys. You have to go by the first point of difference. Start at your chirality center and then work your way out. If there's a tie, then you could go to the next ones that are attached, and so on, and so on, and so on, until you run into one that's overall heavier than the other one. Okay, so that was step two. We've assigned priority to these guys. Now in order to find out whether this is gonna be R or S, we have to take the lightest one and rotate it away from us. Because remember, this is a three-dimensional molecule, so the way I've drawn it now, this methyl group is sticking out. This guy is the, is the center, it's right there. This is in the same plane as the board, this ethyl group. The hydroxyl group is in the same plane as the board. And conveniently, the hydrogen is pointing back. So that's what I mean by rotating that one away from us. It has to be, as you're looking at it, into the board. So now that we've done that, we luckily, it's, uh, <laughs> it's been done for us. Now, we see whether this, whether the next ones go in a clockwise or counterclockwise fashion. So, I'm gonna start with the heaviest one and then go to the lightest. So just like, like out, you know, a minute hand going around a clock, we're gonna start with the heaviest and go to the lightest. So we start with four, three, and then two. So we see that that makes a clockwise motion around like this. So since that's clockwise, that gets the R for right-handed. And there you go. So this molecule is R. So let's say that it, would, that it was arranged the other way. If the four were here, the three were here, and the two were here, then we would have gone this way, and it would have been S. But in this case, it's clockwise, so it's R. And in the next video, we're gonna go over, uh, or in the, the following videos, we're gonna go over what to do if this isn't conveniently pointing away from you. There's a few tricks you could learn, and with practice, it becomes pretty easy.